If you are a therapist and you're anything like me and you feel like December, the holidays, parties, gifts, schedules sneaks up on you every single year, then you are not alone. This video is going to give you some solutions of how to market your private practice over the holidays. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kelly Stevens. I run Private Practice Pro and I teach therapists how to fill successful cash pay private practices. And let me tell you, the holidays has been the key to some of my private practice marketing that I often don't talk about, but I think is important to plan for. I'm gonna break down three strategies that you can use throughout October, November, December, and even a little bit into January to use holiday time as a way to promote your private practice before the the January surge. Now, if you're wondering what the January surge is, usually most therapists will experience an increase in their referrals in January and February. Let's be honest, kind of like gyms do. Not that I necessarily sign up for gyms in January, but a lot of people do because people want to better their lives. They have new year's resolutions and a lot of people go to therapy, but you need to set the foundation for that January surge over the holidays. So here's how you're gonna do it. First, I want you to write down a list of your top referral sources. Ideally, throughout the year, if you've been watching these videos from me for a while, you know that I recommend that you track your referrals. I personally track mine in simple practice, but you can also just use a basic spreadsheet to track your referrals. I want you to go to that list. If you don't have one, start one now. And I want you to think about who referred the most clients to your practice this year. For the top two or three people that refer to you, I want you to do two things. This might be a little controversial. So if you're super by the book, you might not wanna to listen to the rest of this video. I personally give gifts to my referral sources. I am not giving them like a diamond Cartier bracelet, okay? I'm getting them maybe a nice candle or a scarf or something for themselves, all right? We're not talking bribery here, which some people don't like getting gifts for that reason, but for the people who support my private practice, who are there for my clients, maybe the school counselors, the doctors, the nurses, the people who are working in the trenches alongside me in my community, I'm buying them holiday gifts. I am using the holidays as a time to really celebrate them. So for those top few referral sources, I typically will get them a gift. I try to make that gift very personal to them and based on kind of the relationship that we have built through the years. So maybe if I've gone to lunch with somebody and we've talked about a training and we've talked about attending a CBT training together, maybe I'll get them a CBT book. If we've talked about their dog, I'll get them some dog cookies, right? I want something that feels really personal to them. And then for those top three or four referral sources, the next step that I'll do is I will email them, call them, text them, whatever kind of my normal communication with them is. And I will say, hey, I just really want to take an opportunity to thank you for all of the hard work that you have put into working with our shared clients this year for the support that you've given me and I'm wondering if I can take you out to a holiday lunch now I'm not talking about 10 lunches throughout December all right I know <laughs> you have things for your family you might have things for your kids going on there's school things there's holiday parties it's wild but I do think that taking even just one lunchtime slot out of your week each week in November and December can make a huge difference in people knowing that you feel grateful for them and referring you clients in January. When you go to these holidays lunches, I don't want it to feel really stuffy. These are meant to be the lunches for your people, your really close referral sources who you know. Ask them about their kids, ask them about their family, ask them about their practice. This is really a chance for this lunch to feel warm. You, as you are walking into these lunches, I want you to remind yourself and kind of say to yourself, I feel really grateful for this person. How can I communicate that in this lunch? And you know, so often, so many of us feel like awkward or like kind of weird saying how thankful we are for people, but this is the chance to do that. Now, obviously, if you have been in practice for a long time, you might not only have three or four referral sources. You might or you might not, but there are going to be some people that support your private practice that actually don't like necessarily necessarily send tons of clients, or maybe they're more supportive in the sense that they see your clients in other types of mental health or physical health, maybe physical therapists, maybe yoga teachers who are in your community, and you might want to show recognition to them. I personally am not a huge fan of sending out a holiday card 
all over with like a generic picture of my team or whatever. Sometimes there can be fun team holiday cards. All right, I'm gonna put some on the screen here because sometimes companies come out with fun ones and this can be kind of a fun PR move, but ultimately it doesn't feel very personal. So above that top tier of people who refer me a ton of clients, I also tend to have this middle tier of people who just support my business or support my clients. And those are people that I tend to do a very small gift drop off to. So I'm talking like $5 and under, and I will go drop off gifts at people's offices. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not there. I'd be interested to know for you and tell me in the comments below how many of the people that refer to you are local in your community. But if they are, bake some cookies. If you hate baking cookies, buy cookies, buy some seized candy, even just like the little boxes, okay? Take a day and do drop offs. Go to their office, put like a little note or a little flower, say, thank you so much for the way you've supported me this last year. I really have loved working together. Just wanted to drop off a little bit of something and you're gonna drop off something small. One year, I think I dropped off poinsettias that had a message that say like, so glad we're growing together. This is where Pinterest can really be your best, best friend. I'll link to some holiday kind of ideas of crafts that you can do, but we're not talking something really expensive. We're just talking something where you can go to seven or eight offices in a day, drop them off, tell them how thankful you are and move on. Sometimes people will be so touched by this, which I know seems like kind of basic, but a lot of people don't do it, that they'll say, I would love to get together, right? This is where I tend to book lunches for January. So if I run into somebody at a gift drop off, I'll say to them, oh, I would love to get together too. I know the holidays are crazy. Hey, can we pull out our phones and find a time, put a time on the calendar for early January. Let's get lunch or let's get coffee or let's go on a walk and get together. This can be a really great way to kind of cultivate some deeper relationships, even with those people in that middle tier. All right. Lastly, you are going to have some people that you don't really know that well, but you still want to cultivate kind of some holiday spirit with and let them know how thankful you are to them. Now, this is kind of like bonus round and there are gonna be some years when you don't have the capacity for this, but there are gonna be some years when they do. One thing I have really loved doing is a holiday potluck open house. Now, before you panic and think, I do not have time, Kelly, to do this, you have time. Let's talk about how to do it. In October, I plan a holiday potluck open house for early November. I'm not talking the last few weeks of December, I'm talking early November. I send out a simple email to a lot of people in my community. Those top people that refer me a lot, middle range people who refer me sometimes, and just people who I wanna be supportive of, who I wanna get to know better in my community. And I'll say, hey everyone, I wanna invite you to my office or even my home, and we're gonna have a holiday potluck. Here's what you need to do. I'm gonna be bringing coffee and some treats. Bring a treat that you like, come over 10 a.m., let's just mingle and talk and keep it simple. When I say I keep it simple, I mean it. I have a few of those air press coffee brewer things. I'll link some below. And I usually buy some pastries because I personally am not a baker and people bring what they're going to bring. I try to like put a few candles on, even if the events at 10 in the morning, which is usually the sweet spot because people are not expecting a meal. And sometimes I'll have some sort of icebreaker. So I'll have maybe some card on the table where people can pick them up and ask each other questions. But beyond that, I'm not spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on this, but I'm always shocked by number one, how much fun people have. And just the fact that people are used to kind of these very fancy stuffy holiday parties. And it's nice late in November when there aren't tons of things going on already other than maybe Thanksgiving. It's nice late in November to do this before a bunch of other holiday parties get underway to just have a time to come together. I will also use this party as a time to say to people, hey, let's set a time to get together in January and have a one-on-one -on -one and just really kind of talk about the new year and our goals together. Together. Those are the three ways that I really cultivate the holiday spirit while also kind of keeping in the back of my mind that I'm trying to create a January surge in referrals coming into my private practice. Tell me below if these are things that you would implement, if they wouldn't. I'm super curious to know how you handle the holidays in your private practice. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.